What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to the Call Game Recap. Today is one of those days, man. So much happened in the NBA world. Six, seven, eight games slate. We had 50 pointers. Maybe the highlight of the year. So much stuff, and I'm here to talk about it. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Let's jump right in because I know there will be a lot. First of all, the ESPN website is trash. The way that they make you autoplay videos, even when you tell them to stop, is ridiculous. I'm just putting that out there. Start off with the first game. Um, this is the first and only nationally televised game my Chicago Bulls have, at least for the first half of the schedule. And me and the guys were getting ready to watch this game, and I just told them, I just want my Bulls to play hard and not get blown out. Because you really think about it, when you have one nationally televised game, everybody watches this game. This might be a lot of people's first and only, like, like, way of watching the Chicago Bulls this is the only impression they might have of this team. So don't be terrible. And today we didn't shoot the ball well, but we weren't terrible. I feel like some people who may have watched this game be like, okay, I realize that the Bulls are not a good team, but they ain't no pushovers like they have been over the last couple of seasons. That's all I really care about. People got to see Zach Levine in action, even though he didn't have a great shooting night. You saw him take over parts of this game. All I really wanted. But all that being said, when our center is 6'9 and we don't have a big body other than him, yeah, guys like Joel Embiid will eat. Last week, I made a case for LeBron's MVP candidacy. A couple days ago, I made a case for Damian Lillard's MVP candidacy. And today, I'm making that case for Joel Embiid, my top three getters right now, vote getters right now. Today is the most dominant big man performance I've seen this season. That's saying a lot because Jokic has had a 50-pointer himself. Jokic said, a, well, that 48 against the Jazz was... Or what 46 against the Jazz is really good. This one might be better. And the reason I say that is because no matter what the Bulls did, it did not matter. Double teams, freak. We had, we had like triple teams that time. And he closed out games like hit a big shot, come down on defense, get the block, rebound, get fouled, and hit the free, st free throws to ice it. That is MVP-type qualities. And especially when, when you take a consideration like the team is just really, really bad when he sits – and, and, and you saw it when they went against the Jazz. Joel Embiid wasn't there. Ben Simmons had the opportunity to do some things, but it still wasn't enough. But Joel Embiid is a team, offensively and defensively. The evolution of Joel Embiid has been so incredible because these are the type of things we wanted to see from him over the past couple seasons, and he hasn't been able to do it consistency, consistently, right, whether it be due to injury, whether it be due to rest and things like that. But this year, he's really doing it. Like, if you think about last season before, he said his goals were to win Defensive Player of the Year and win MVP, right? He didn't do any of those things, and he actually didn't even make an all-NBA team. You know that is in the back of his mind every single day he laces up his sneakers, bro. He's 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 the he's the guy. He is the absolute guy. And as much as he was great today, I do want to show some love to Tobias Harris as well, because if I'm not mistaken, in the first half, he didn't really do that much, but Tobias Harris had one of those glue games where he had 20. Um, He did a lot of the playmaking because with no Ben Simmons, there wasn't really a lot of that going on, and he deserves a lot of love as well. Very underrated season so far for Tobias Harris. I know that like Daryl Morey and some Philly fans are trying to get him into the All-Star game. I don't know if he'll actually get that, Um, but he definitely deserves some consideration, man. Joel Embiid, what a performance, man. Just, just just, just overall ridiculous, right? Next game we're going to talk about is the other nationally televised game because that was a good one, man. That man Donald Mitchell was on his T-Mac stuff. He was like, I will not go down. But he missed that free throw on purpose. It is a bit weird. Um, this is what I want to say to the Clippers fans out there because I do get a lot of mentions about the Clippers being an under-the-radar team. And what I always say to those mentions is that's exactly what you want as a Clippers fan. The way last season went through where, where you were on top of things, you're on magazines, you got commercials saying we're the kings of L.A., and then you fall flat on your face and you're the laughing stock of the NBA. You want to be under the radar right now. And this was an amazing win against the hottest team in basketball right and then guess what it wasn't Kawhi I mean these guys did play you know have their impact but it wasn't Kawhi it wasn't Paul George it was the surrounding pieces Lou Williams after we talked trash not talk trash we were pointing out how bad Lou Williams had been over the first month of the season the last week or two amazing because Paul George and Kawhi Leonard both missed a decent amount of time and while they were out this Clippers team was putting together wins without them Right, And that's what you want. Mook is showing that every penny that they gave him in the offseason was well worth it. The Luke Kennard thing, I'm still iffy about because he ain't really he ain't done much this season at all. He got, a, he got a DMP today, and I think that was Coach's decision. Yeah, it was. And they paid that man $17, $18 million, whatever. But like like today, um, you saw Lou Will and you saw Mook. And then the big thing is you see the Patrick Beverly impact, right? Patrick Beverly has missed a lot of games so far this season. And I know that everybody wants to joke about Patrick Beverly because he does. He is super extra. I understand people that don't like him because because he is extra. Um, he did do the thing with Russell Westbrook. I know it wasn't intentional to hurt Russell Westbrook, but that, that's a bad picture in people's mind. And then even Russell Westbrook said he's just been running around fooling y'all. But you can't watch tonight's game like, like, like I did and say that 
Patrick Beverly, Patrick Beverly just be fooling y'all. Defensively on top of his game, he hit his shots, and that's all you really want from Patrick Beverly, right? Um, I think the Clippers are better under the radar, y'all. I know you want to see your team get media love and everything, but I'm telling you, it's probably better for the long run to stay under the radar because the, the minute people start caring about you and you start to go on a little loser streak is the minute you get upset. That's all I'm really saying. So be okay with being under the radar. Next, let's talk about the other 50-point game, two 50-point games on tonight. And this is the most efficient scoring night I've seen from a guard that was just – like, Jamal Murray is so – weird of a player because he is as streaky as it gets moments you see why they give him that max contract today is one of those moments but there are games where he have eight points 10 points 12 points 20 points six points eight. like he has the biggest roller coaster of points ever it's just the way it is, right? And I think Mike Malone, after the last game, was like, man, Jokic is doing everything he can. We need somebody else to step up. And then now you get him stepping up. This was the first version of Bubble Murray we've seen since the bubble. 50 without a free throw is ridiculous. It had never been done before, according to um, according to Twitter. I ain't do the fact checking myself. But according to Twitter, never done before. It's incredible. And the funniest thing about this is, like, we were watching this game, right? I think he had 20 going into half. Michael Porter Jr. also had 21 going into half. And I was like, oh, who's going to have the good second half? Because you know both of them probably wasn't going to end up with 40. Michael Porter Jr. scored one point in the second half. And then Jamal Murray did all of the rest. As good of a performance this was and how fun it was to watch, I do got to give some love to my other short king out there. He might be taking the reins as my favorite short king in the NBA right now. Compazzo, bro. Compazzo is is the exact opposite of what you would expect from a short king because we get this reputation, especially in the NBA world, where we are defensive liabilities. When you're under six foot, let's be honest, bro. When you're you can't guard, it's harder. It's way harder. Compazzo is a good defender under six foot. I don't care what they got him listed as. He's under six foot and a good defender. He's fun, and those are the type of things I really like. I, I hope I hope that um uh, Jermichael Green is okay. Um, I don't know the any updates about that. And then uh, Gary Harris, too, right? Gary Harris as well. I, they both got to get healthy. And then the Cavs continue to slide, man. They told Drummond not to come back. They continue to slide. It's just like, ah. I mean, they showed the glimpses of what could be. I think that's what Cavs fans should be thinking about. We showed glimpses of what we could be. Let's get another lottery pick. Let's add on top of this. Like, one thing I did see about them that I can say positively, Isaac Okoro was aggressive. Now, I do know that he missed a bunch of bunnies, but he was aggressive getting to the basket and trying to create his own shot, and that's evolution of him, which is good. Next game, the Kimball Walker game. This is, if you didn't know, this is the Kenny Beecham boost. Anytime I talk to an NBA player, the next couple games, you expect them to be great. The same thing happened with Rudy Gobert, and now it's happening with Kimball Walker. I interviewed him yesterday. We'll be out soon. And he came in and he was like, oh yeah, I hear y'all talking that trash Celtics fans. I'm still, I still got it. But this is the thing about the Celtics. They they have these games where they look amazing. Uh, everybody's contributing. And then they go on two games where it's like, okay, now only three of our players are really contributing. Oh, that bench that we saw really good uh, tonight won't be good tomorrow. So they need to keep that repetition. Time Lord was amazing today. Overall, their bigs were good today. Tristan, uh, Tice, Time Lord, great. The Atlanta Hawks, though. Oh, man, how, how disappointed it has been. Um, We always say the thing, bet on yourself. Fred Van Vliet got this whole mantra. Jimmy Butler. We've seen so many NBA players bet on themselves when they have a contract on the table. We're like, no, I'm going to go into this restricted year so I can get more money. And this season, it was John Collins. And so far, John Collins is losing money day by day. Day by day. They offered him $90 million in extension, and he said, no, I deserve more. And uh, nope, so far this season, he ain't really done that. Gallinari is one of the most most disappointing players, disappointing signings of the season. He was bad, and and overall, he's just been very bad for them. And it's just it's tough because the Atlanta Hawks were a team that when you think about all their signings, you're like, okay, this is a team that should be, be in the position to be at least in the play-in, right? And so far, it hasn't really been that. I know they're still missing Hunter, which is such a big piece to them. Um, um, who else did they miss? Inyaka Kongwu, Rondo. Was Rondo playing today? Rondo didn't play today. And Chris Dunn, we don't know a goddamn thing about. So they are missing some quality players, but there are games that they've lost this season that they probably should have won. I'm not saying this is one of them, but they just can't get everybody to contribute the way that they want them to. Gallinari, man, that contract is looking bad through the first month and a half of the season. That's what I'm saying. Um, Next game that I got to watch 
parts of was was Bucks versus Thunder. I was hoping that the Thunder won this game, and it's not because I don't like the Bucks or anything, but I like I like when 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 people got pressure on them, and Coach Bud had pressure on them, and luckily he went against a team that's going on the you know on the downward thing, so they got to win. But like I like when people have pressure on them. All of the people I follow on Bucks Twitter got a fire Bud uh, profile picture right now, and when you get wins, that that firing process probably get get pushed back just a little bit. Um, and then I think. Oh, the last game was the Raptors versus Timberwolves. Such an ugly game, right? But it did get the highlight of the year so far. Listen, there is a t- Nate Duncan. All right, this is specifically to you. I, you know what? I like Nate Duncan and Danley Rue. Um, they're like very technical stat guys in the NBA world, and and there is a world. I mean, there is a a spot for them in the NBA world, right? We need those stat guys. We need the eye test guys. We need the combination of the two. This man, Anthony Edwards, had the play of a lifetime today. You the Watanabe, why Why were you jumping, right? And then instead of praising them and just doing what everybody was just hyped about this highlight, we got with the party poop and they dunk and coming in like, yeah, cool dunk, but he shot three for yada yada. Yes, he had a bad game overall. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a rookie at the end of the day, right? Instead of, I just, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know why we, hopefully everybody understands or some people understand, but uh, Norman Powell, Last couple games, especially with Kyle Lowry being out, has been incredible for them. Um, you to watch Tanabe. I know he ended up got, getting dunked on, but he brings in the in the minutes that he plays, he brings his energy. I mean, he jumped. He jumped at the end of that day. That that lets you know that he's playing with some energy. Um, Terrence Davis. I forgot Terrence Davis even existed, y'all. Came in and hit a big shot later in the game. But for the Timberwolves, bro. Give Carl Anthony Towns the goddamn ball. Every time they're in a close game, I mention this. Carl Anthony Towns can't get the ball. Give it, to, just give it to him. It's not like teams are triple teaming him and denying the, the the entry passes. Give him the ball. I don't know if he took a shot in the last three minutes. It's Carl Anthony Towns. Give him the ball. Yeah, uh, the Saunders Saunders kids got to be better. Saunders kids got to be better, bro. There's no way. And it was like multiple timeouts, and they couldn't even draw up a play where Carl Anthony Towns even gets a look at the ball, the look at the basket. It's rough. It's rough. Um, is that everything? Did I talk about every game that I got to see? Um, didn't watch Magic, but I saw Vucevic had a great game, triple double game. Very under the radar. I wouldn't be surprised if he got some All Star nods from some coaches. But y'all know the coaches are notorious for um just picking players on winning teams. So he's one of those guys that maybe not get get the love. Um, which other? Is that every game? I did not. I I need to get back on the Grizzlies grind, man, because. Because Jaws having these performances. I need to get back on the Grizzly grind. Oh, my God. That is not the only game. Probably my favorite game of the day. Thank God I looked at the slate again. Christopher Emmanuel Paul continues to show that he is the point God. Point God. And this is not just a fan in me talking, bro. This man took over the fourth quarter, and not just with the scoring, but with the shot. I don't think Devin Booker scored in the fourth quarter. He, he With the scoring, the passing, they were down by double digits in this fourth quarter. They they hit their shots, and a lot of that was Chris Paul being Chris Paul. I absolutely love this man. He is one of those dudes that if you are not watching Chris Paul right now, you are missing out on greatness. We don't know how many years left Chris Paul has at playing at this level. You need to be tuned in because this man continuously takes teams and turn them into playoff teams. Now, I know that the Suns were 8-0 in the bubble, so maybe they would have been on a trajectory to make the playoffs without him, but he is guaranteeing them a playoff spot by his amazing play he should be in all-star considerations I damn didn't want to put him as a lock but I ain't looked at the rest of the players he deserves it I don't care what the counting stats say I don't care what the counting stats say you got to look deeper than that you got to watch these games to see the impact of Christopher Emmanuel Paul the Pelicans rotation is trash that's my takeaway I hate when I hate when teams get in the close games and then instead of running the flowing offense they may have run for the first three quarters they end up resulting to isolation ball and it's just why 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 take it away from what was working the entire game Stan Van Gundy's got to get those rotations down bro because they took it was the, it was the end of the third quarter rotation or, or substitutions that let the Phoenix Suns take over Chris Paul was feasting on the backup guards and and instead and instead of seeing it and trying to stop the bleeding while it was there. Stan Van Gunn's like, nah, we're going to wait. We're going to wait. We're going to keep our normal rotations. We're not going to make any adjustments to the things I've done all the rest of the season. This is a game they should have won, 100%. A game that Devin Booker doesn't score in the fourth. Maybe he scored one or twice, but I don't, I don't feel like he scored the entire fourth quarter. Devin Booker didn't score the entire fourth quarter, and we were up by double digits, and we still lost? 
Frank Kaminsky has been a very weird player to throw into the starting lineup, but he has been amazing for them. Um, in, in moderation, today was one of those really big games for them. DeAndre Aiden was having so many things. Him on the glass was great. It's just, mm-mm. It's, it shouldn't have been a game. Jay Crowder, big game. But that's it. Okay, I'm so happy I went back on it. Leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Let me know what you think about, about everything I said. Uh, agree or disagree. I'll be in the comment section. Peace. Call game.